This video is sponsored by Dashlane. Learn how to protect your passwords and increase your internet security at the end of this video or check out the links in the pinned comment. All right, so there are hundreds of list videos all over YouTube showing off the best Oculus Quest games or the best VR games of all time or the best VR games to play with your friends if you had friends. And I'm not innocent here. I've made those types of videos too. And I like best of list videos just as much as anyone else. But you know what? For as many great, amazing VR games as there are out there, there are just as many, if not more, absolutely terrible games. Now, if there's a bad flat screen game, it's kind of whatever. Bad VR games though, have an entirely different effect and can sometimes even cause bodily harm. Yeah, I might be able to play Boneworks running around my house like a madman and be fine, but that's because it's a good game. Get me in a bad game and uh, I'm on the toilet puking out bot Unity assets and bad frame rates. So some of these games are just legitimately bad games that shouldn't have been made. And some of these are experiences that should have been good, but ended up being terrible due to incredibly lazy developers. But let's just get right into it. These are the five worst VR games of all time. Starting off with number five. So I love motorcycles. It's one of my biggest hobbies and passions of all time. And it's also how I actually transport myself everywhere. I have been waiting and waiting for an even semi-decent motorcycle game in VR for a long time now. And unfortunately, there's just not many of them. And the ones that do exist aren't very good. One of the worst of them, however, is a game called Bike Rush. Now, the premise is simple. One man, a motorcycle, guns, and shooting your way through Dubai. The problem is... That's it. I don't even know why I'm on an endless killing rampage shooting down helicopters, and to be honest, I hardly even know how. The controls for this game are so incredibly awful that most of the time the game does the exact opposite of what I actually want it to do. You'd think that controlling a motorcycle in VR would be easy. Grip the handlebars and steer. But no, <laughs> uh, no. We're using the thumbstick up in here to steer. And in the case that you do crash, which you will, get ready for some puke-inducing moments as your camera is thrown up in the air and spun at 3000 RPM. A big problem here is that this game was made by one of the most horrendous developers around, Axios. There's potential here, and the game was launched back in 2018 as early access for only 10 bucks, and it was promised to be improved on. From support for other VR hardware to more features and an actually fleshed out game, but much like Axios' other games, it was abandoned and left to rot as a motion sick inducing, terribly controlled, paid temple run on a motorcycle game. Now, this game is playable, it's just awful, and it's an obvious asset flip that could make even the most hardcore of VR stomachs churn. But don't worry, this gets worse much worse. Now for number four, if you're like me, you kind of like Ghostbusters. I mean, it's not like it's my favorite franchise or anything, but it's kind of cool. So when I found out that Sony Motion Pictures Virtual Reality Studios themselves had published a VR game under the Ghostbusters license, I was obviously pumped and I kind of wondered how I had missed it, but then I was glad that I did miss it. This is Ghostbusters VR Showdown. Believe it or not, it's actually part two of a Ghostbusters VR game game series, and oh my god, there is no movement, there is no gameplay, it's literally point and click. You stand in one location the entire game and just point at the enemies, then click. I guess the visuals aren't terrible and the atmosphere is alright, but if you want to play this game, it's pretty much $20 for a total of 13 minutes of content. Out of 11 reviews for this game, it has a negative standing on Steam and I get why. Actually, now after 12 reviews. And I'll tell you why. It took some digging, but this game is actually an incredibly lazy port by Sony from PlayStation VR. Look, if this is what my PlayStation VR friends have to deal with, I am so so incredibly sorry guys. It blows my mind that Sony could treat their licenses like this. The game itself, even if it worked, is a terrible waste of money. 13 minutes for $20? I can get a better deal than that from Lou behind Massage Envy and still have a better time. To sum up Ghostbusters VR, it's a sigh while holding your controller in the air like you're trying to change the channel with a remote that has low batteries. It's just a tiring, forgettable, disappointing mess that Sony should be ashamed of. This is 
is not how you handle a first party licensed game, whether it's VR or not. And if you're going to port a PSVR game to PC, at least take the time to properly map controls. It's not like it's a free game. Next up, we have Nostos. Now, this is a game that I wanted to love so badly. And I tried. I mean, I like anime, VR, MMOs, and those tags are pretty much what Nostos originally promised to be. And there was a lot of money and talent thrown behind the project. Just look at the original trailer. To this day, I look at the world built within Nostos and I want to give it that 45th shot to see if it got any better, but this ain't it, chief. Nostos is probably closer to one of the most disappointing VR games rather than the actual worst VR games ever, but it's still pretty awful. On an RTX 2080 Ti, I was getting less than 20 FPS, the servers were constantly broken for months after its release, basic features didn't work, and the matchmaking and playing together part of the game was broken as well. Inventories reset that you spent hours working on, and this is all if you could make it past the terrible performance or the bugs that stopped you from playing in entirely. The combat was, of course, clunky, but that's something that I could deal with, especially if this is somewhat categorized as a VR MMO. I don't expect Gorn or Blade and Sorcery level of combat here. And I gotta say, I was looking forward to Nostos becoming my game that I play all the time, but missing features, broken promises, and bad performance put a stop to all of that. Turns out that things kind of make sense why this game flopped so hard, and I feel for it. Turns out that the parent company of the developers, NetEase, was running into serious financial problems, and Nostos was a big part of that. And this is why I'm forever skeptical of any company claiming that they are creating a VR MMO. MMOs are the most difficult and expensive types of games to develop, and they can trash a company if it's not profitable. And it was pretty clear that NetEase, a China based company was having financial problems funding their game. And unfortunately, COVID seems to be the straw that broke the camel's back. While it's still true, this was a very high profile VR game that had a lot of hype for it. And it turned out to be honestly terrible. It seems like the devs did try, but for the most part, this game has been almost completely abandoned in the state it was about a year ago, which is not good. Now for number two, the second worst VR game of all time. We have half Half-Life Alex. Wait, uh, wait, 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 that's not right. <laughs> okay, now for real, the second worst VR game of all time is Chef You. Look, I love to cook. It's one of my favorite things. A realistic cooking game in VR is a dream to me. I would be able to cook and cook and cook and I don't have to eat all of it or any of it. Now, for some, that might sound really depressing, but for me, that's exciting. And Chef You is just about the best option that we have. Unfortunately, it made it on this list. Controls just don't work, especially not on Knuckles. The game wants you to do these really specific things in order to progress, and it just doesn't feel like cooking. It's not realistic in any sense, and the game claims to be realistic. Plus, no. I have to listen no. to this no. every time Ow. I do Stop. anything. Get out of the kitchen! Oh. Get out! I suppose the game is playable, but it's not fun, it's not cooking, and most of the time, it just doesn't work. And crashes if you look at a steak wrong. Plus, it's $30. However, I will say, it is hilariously bad. I've had enough. I've had enough! So, the worst VR game of all time. Not gonna lie, it was hard to make up my mind here, but before I talk about which game is actually worst, I wanna talk about the genre that it's in, because it's not mentioned nearly enough. And I'm talking about the giant catalog of terrible shovelware adult games on Steam. I mean, if you go to VR games on Steam, then sort by user reviews, then scroll to the very bottom, you know, the worst reviews, they are everywhere. Terrible cash grab adult VR games. I mean, just look at a few. Seduction, Welcome to Paradise, Girls VR Uncensored, 
Thai Girls VR, Tropical Girls VR. I could just keep going and going. They're all so bad and Steam is just flooded with them. And it's kind of a problem to be honest. I am all on board with Steam being committed to freedom of speech and expression on their platform, but VR has a very specific problem of being saturated with low quality gross cash grabs. It's not like these experiences and games are free either. These studios are very obviously looking to cash in on the horny dude that just got a VR headset and wants to see some stiff in his face with the Mixamo animation set. But none of them are as bad as this one. If you scroll all the way down, this is, according to Steam's ratings, the worst VR game ever made. Well, besides YouTube VR. And uh, by the way, Google, get your act together. That's really embarrassing. But right above YouTube VR is Trailing Girl. Now, if you ever want to roleplay Rent a Girlfriend in VR, then this might be for you. Because let me just read the synopsis. Quote, In the game, you will play as the boy to track them, and don't be found during the tracking process. When you arrive at the designated place, you can trigger the story and talk to her. Control the characters to walk. Follow the female host. Do not be found. Let her have a good impression on you. End quote. So basically, the point of the game is to be a stalker. You follow around a variety of girls taking pictures and videos, hiding in trash cans like the trash that you are, hoping not to be noticed. This is a yikes, and is pretty disgusting, actually. I mean, if some people, as the reviews say, want to play this game for even educational purposes... Wait, educational purposes? Are you training on being a stalker? What's that even supposed to mean? E either way, say you're, um, I don't know, making a video on the worst VR games of all time and you actually want to play this game. Be prepared to be stuck in actual hell. This game breaks every VR rule set that has ever been established. The first video that plays actually moves you and your view around, and I swear it's like the developers of this game made this game as a trap to make stalkers puke on themselves, and if that's the goal, then hats off. Only about half of the controls actually work, and you'll end up being stuck in this purgatory of getting timed out. Eventually, I did get some of the controls to work, and I could actually walk around, but you know what? <laughs> It's just, it's just not worth it. No, 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 no. This is the worst VR game of all time, but thank you to Artent for making this. I, and actually, I'm going to leave a positive review. This game is so bad that it actively discourages creepy stalking behavior. And you know what? For being so bad, just maybe it has a good cause. <laughs> You know, there are so many other terrible VR games out there that I'd love to cover and make similar videos on, and I know I talk about every good game out there, but who's given the love to the bad ones? I mean, I bought all these games, I played them, and now my stomach is killing me, so I'm gonna go lay down and rest my head and maybe have some tea and wash my eyes out with some Boneworks later. But I would like to do more of these, so let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more too. And make sure you like, you know, thumbs up this video too. Hopefully we can spread some awareness as to which games not to buy, and maybe discourage the asset flippers or big studios from making shitty games. What if there was a service that made your life easier by filling in passwords for you across all of your devices, allowing you to make far more complex passwords so that your own personal security is far enhanced? Well, that is a thing, and it's called Dashlane. Dashlane can be your one-stop shop for your digital identity by managing all of your passwords so that you don't have to keep track of each one. Personal info and financials, making your digital life safe and more secure. Dashlane works across all devices, including Apple products, products, PCs, Android, Safari, and Chrome, you name it. Dashlane also has secure autofill features that work for your personal information and credit cards, saving you time when shopping online, a VPN to prevent prying eyes from tracking and helping you access content anywhere, plus dark web monitoring to see if your information is being bought and sold illegally. To give it a try for free on your first device, go to dashlane.com slash thrillseeker and use my promo code thrillseeker to get 50% if you want to upgrade to premium. Otherwise, it's free, so give it a shot. 
I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters. You guys make content like this possible. And and, and don't worry, I, I refunded all of these games. I'm not wasting your support on this garbage. I especially want to thank all of my Omegas like Lucas, Morga Joka, XD Cloud, CPCJ79, Rusty Killen, Chaotic, Dented Melon, Suicide, KR, That Brock Guy, HCG Randon, True Killa, Benji, Ronzarelli, Biz, Fusion Oak, and Very Evil Shadow. I could not do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.